Hi everyone, and welcome to Junosphere, where we learn about a whole sphere of topics and how they are interconnected, just as we are all interconnected. The purpose of this video is to enlighten and entertain you. In this video, Juno takes a look at the celebration known as Dia de los Muertos, also known as the Day of the Dead. In actuality, the celebration lasts more than one day and is not Mexican Halloween. Also, some form of the holiday is practiced in many different countries. This video focuses mostly on the traditions of the Mexican Day of the Dead. Dia de los Muertos is a festival held every year that brings the living and the dead together for a great feast and celebration to remember the dead and placate them for another year. It often involves parties, songs, parades, and special foods. Ceremonies for the dead are also part of Chinese and Japanese culture but perhaps the most elaborate ceremonies occur in Mexico on November 2nd, All Souls Day. A few days before, offerings of food and toys for children who have died are placed on clay altars. Around midnight, the spirits of the dead children are thought to come and enjoy their gifts. On All Souls Day itself, Children enjoy special food, and adults prepare an even bigger feast. Altars are decorated with skulls and bones made from bread for the spirits. Later in the day, neighbors go from house to house, sharing memories of the deceased, who are thought to gather and listen to what is said about them. No dead soul is neglected for fear it may become sad or angry. These visitations last all night and are followed by a mass early the next morning, at which time the dead return to their graves. After a day of rest, everyone goes to the cemetery to enjoy a picnic with the departed so that they can rest happily until they rise again to mingle with the living next year. The Day of the Dead refers to a three-day celebration incorporating beliefs of Roman Catholicism. Because the Roman Catholic feast day that honors the deceased also incorporates a tremendous amount of older pagan spirituality and tradition, the modern Mexican Day of the Dead is a tremendously complex celebration. It is important to specify Mexican Day of the Dead because virtually every Latin American community throughout South and Central America also has some sort of commemorative feast, as do many communities elsewhere. Although the purpose is identical, traditions vary greatly. Aspects of the Mexican Day of the Dead have become increasingly influential over neo-pagan spirituality. November Eve and the days immediately before and after are internationally considered the time when the dead visit the living. Depending upon perspectives toward the nature of the dead, some cultures find this a scary time. In other words, if the revenant dead can only be up to no good, then the time when they return is a time of great danger. In traditional Mexican culture, however, the dead are welcomed, feasted, propitiated, and then sent safely on their way. This is the natural order. It is natural for the dead to appear at this time and it is natural for them to depart afterwards. The dead who are not propitiated and treated with respect, love, and honor are those who may linger and become troublesome ghosts. It is in the community's interest for this not to occur, and the Day of the Dead is celebrated not only by individuals and families, but also by communities at large. 
To witness Day of the Dead celebrations in Mexican villages is to understand how festivals like Beltane, Midsummer's Eve, or Samhain must once have been an entire community's affair. Similar festivals honoring the dead were once held at this time of year throughout Italy, most especially in Salerno. The practice was banned by the church in the 15th century. There isn't just one fixed way to celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Traditions vary depending on location and region. However, some themes and traditions remain consistent. Each day of the three-day festival is dedicated to a different community of the deceased. The dead are envisioned as a parade of spirits arriving in scheduled hosts arranged according to age and manner of death. The Mexican Days of the Dead is a celebratory festival combining humor with devotion, a lust for life with an acceptance of death. Traditional Aztec culture didn't fear death. Death was understood as a period of deep sleep or true reality, while life or lives was the dreams experienced during this sleep slash death. Modern Mexican culture revels in humorous, grotesque, defiant artistic celebrations of death, which simultaneously celebrate life, too. Death isn't a topic to be avoided, but instead it is deified and mocked while simultaneously respected and revered. During the Day of the Dead celebration, images of skeletons are omnipresent. Decorated sugar skulls fill the stores in the period leading up to the holiday in the same manner that pumpkins and Halloween-oriented cookies and candies do at this time in the United States. Special holiday foods are prepared and served only at this time of year, including certain moles, Mexican stews featuring bitter chocolate, and the bread of the dead a sweet loaf decorated with skulls and crossbones. An ofrenda, translated into English as an offering table or altar, is set up in the home. The ofrenda serves as the magnet that guides and welcomes the spirits of the deceased. A table is beautifully decorated and laden with the feast to be shared by the living and the dead. Technically, the festivities begin on the eve of October 31st in conjunction with the Roman Catholic festival of All Hallows' Eve. However, depending upon region or village, it may begin as early as October 27th. Commemorations prior to the 31st are more openly pagan in orientation than the official three-day period which is technically a Roman Catholic feast. What follows is a standard calendar for the Day of the Dead celebration. However, be advised that this is subject to variation. October 27th is dedicated to those who died without families, whose families have since died out, or to those who, for whatever reason, have no one to welcome them and create an ofrenda for them. Sad, lonely, and potentially jealous and resentful, if left hungry and unpropitiated, these are the spirits who can potentially become dangerous, malevolent ghosts. Bread and water is placed outside for them. October 28th is dedicated to those who died violently whether by accident or through intention. They, too, are given fresh bread and water. In both of these cases, food and drink are placed outside, not inside, the home. 
The intention is to prevent the phenomenon of destructive, malicious, hungry ghosts, not to have the ghosts become so comfortable that they decide to move in. October 29th is a day of preparation. October 30th is dedicated to pagan babies and babies in limbo, those children who died without baptism or unknown wandering children's souls. Bread, water, and small things that would please a child, like sweets, toys, and juice, are placed outside. Up until this point, any food offered is not shared by the living. Once given, it is left outside. The night of October 31st may be dedicated to dead children, while November 1st is for deceased adults. In some communities, however, November 1st is Dia de los Angelitos, the Day of the Little Angels. October 31st is offered to dead children whom a family knew and loved. The offering is made in the home. The dead souls from this point on are welcomed into the home. November 1st is dedicated to deceased adults, friends, family members, loved ones, or those whom one admires and wishes to honor. Offerings may be made at home or brought to the cemetery where living and dead may feast together. By the evening of November 2nd, the dead should be gone well on their way back to where they came from. Trails of shredded yellow marigold blossoms may be laid to lead them back to the family plot. Stubborn, lingering ghosts are sent on their way by masked mummers. This once would have been the shaman's job. Day of the Dead rituals are intrinsically associated with food. Special foods are not only prepared for the dead, but for the living, too. Foods specifically associated with the holiday are eagerly awaited year-round. Mexican sugar skulls are a traditional confection and folk art used to celebrate the Day of the Dead. Their name describes them exactly, packed, hardened sugar molded into the shape of skulls, then decorated with vividly colored icing bright bits of colored foil, sequins, and or colored sugar. The name of the loved one they are intended to honor is traditionally piped over the forehead with icing. Most sugar skulls are tiny, although larger ones exist too. Sugar skulls are sold as treats for children during the weeks leading up to the festival providing nothing inedible is used to ornament them. Sugar skulls are very edible, but very sweet. They are also used to decorate the home altars, also known as ofrendas, that welcome the visiting souls of the dead. Sugar skulls are carried to the cemetery with flowers and other objects used to decorate tombs. Mexican sugar skulls are not hard to make. Requirements are sugar, meringue powder, water, and special skull molds. Blend one teaspoon of meringue powder into each cup of granulated sugar used. Meringue powder is a must and cannot be omitted. A little bit of water is then used to moisten the blended sugar so that it achieves the texture of beach sand. This is then added to the molds and allowed to dry for approximately eight hours, after which the skulls may be decorated as desired. What a wonderful and colorful way to honor those who have passed on. Do you celebrate some form of the Day of the Dead? Let me know in the comments below. For more information on a wide variety of topics, please check out the growing library of videos on Junosphere. There are numerous playlists to choose from. 
Please like, subscribe, comment, and share, and jingle that bell for notifications. I am so appreciative of your support. Thanks for tuning in, and I invite you to tune into Junosphere again soon. Bye!